Howdy gamers, old gamer guy here. You may be wondering, why am I using my recently purchased PS5 to play a game that looks like it came out in 2010? Because this game actually did come out in 2010 on the PC. It did not come to the consoles until much later. But obviously these are some old school visuals. So why am I playing this on my PS5? Well, it was recently announced that the sequel to this game is coming to consoles. Mount and Blade 2 Bannerlord is coming to consoles. Uh, I don't think there's been any footage of gameplay and I don't think there's a release date yet. But I'm very excited to hear that it's coming to consoles because I love this game so much that they could basically uh, release this game, this exact game, but improve the graphics, and I would pay full price for it again. That's how much I love this game. We are pursuing some bandits here. And you can see some other things are going on in the background. Less talking, more raiding. But we have caught up with the bandits, and we're going to kill these bandits. There are only 13 of them. There are 31 of us. I like to keep the battles very one-sided like this, if at all possible. I'm keeping my cavalry troops with me. They are following me, and then everybody else is running straight toward the enemy. Everybody else is kind of a mix, uh, mostly infantry, but some archers and crossbowmen. And now I'm telling my cavalry to charge. And we will make short work of these bandits. I won't do very much of the work myself, although I am going to get a, a kill here. That's good. My troops don't sit, don't seem to notice that I'm not really good at the actual combat. Uh, their morale is pretty high because I keep leading them into winnable battles. And I'm keeping them supplied with coin and food. Because they do eat. Your troops do have food that they require. So when you go off riding in the wilderness, you have to take some smoked fish or salted pork or something like that take some bread with you because they will eat the food and if you run out they will start to uh, get angry <laughs> and they will desert you but I'm trying to make a name for myself here uh, I forget how many kingdoms there are in this game but this is a basically a continent with multiple kingdoms and you make a character, you choose a background for your character, and you're not actually from any of these kingdoms. There's a little look at the map right there. That's just a small part of the map. But you choose which kingdom to arrive in, and then you try to make your name, and there are various noble houses in each kingdom, and you can involve yourself in all of their business and you can eventually marry into a noble family and you can become the king of that kingdom you can uh, you can even declare your own separate kingdom now these raiders are trying to lead me toward their base over here and uh, I don't want to follow them too close over that way because the area is swarming with raiders if this was my home kingdom, uh, I would destroy that base. But this is not my home kingdom. My kingdom is actually at war with this kingdom. But it doesn't really matter. I can ride around freely because I'm not part... You know, I'm not, a, I'm not an official part of that kingdom. I'm just... Uh, we're just a bunch of mercenaries riding around killing bandits. 
I started off with the Nords, which are, I guess, essentially the Vikings. Uh, this area of land we're fighting on, uh, that kingdom, I think, is kind of the equivalent of uh, medieval Russia. And then there is a kingdom that's sort of the equivalent of uh, the Mongols. And then there's one that I guess is kind of like your, your desert tribe. Maybe maybe they're supposed to be Muslims. I'm not really sure, but uh, you know, desert people. Um, I think the Swadians are kind of the equivalent of England. Uh, and I know there are some others too that I'm not thinking of. Each kingdom kind of has their own fighting style and their own types of troops. And uh, each kingdom is better at particular things than others. So this video is just basically going to be me killing bandits, but there is a lot more to this game um, that I'm not even going to try to get into. Uh, once you're in with the noble families, you might be given control of a town where you can build improvements. Uh, and of course you build an army and once you're in with the nobles and you're actually part of a kingdom, um, you will take play, you will take part in the wars that that kingdom gets involved in and, uh, you could siege a castle. There's just a lot to this game that I really won't try to get into because just like with Stellaris, uh, I know what I know, but what I know is a very small amount of what there is to know. <laughs> but this is the biggest battle you're going to see here in this video. This is 23 raiders versus my 31 troops. We're, of course, going to win. And, of course, I'm going to do very badly again. And I'm not sure whether it's because I'm just bad at the game or because I haven't put very many points into things like my riding skill and my skill with various weapons and armor and all that. This is an RPG, so you do spend points. See right there, I'm having a hard time getting my horse to move, but I have not put any points into my riding skill, so I don't know <laughs> I don't know if that's a, a bug or a glitch or if that's the game uh, behaving like it's supposed to. So yeah, I was very excited about the announcement of Banner Lord for consoles, and I thought, hey, I could load up Warband and we could check out how Warband runs on the PS5, but also kind of give you an idea of uh, what to expect with that sequel. It is going to have better graphics. I'm not really sure how many console players get into this game, and I suspect it's mainly because of the visuals, but the sequel is going to look better. <laughs> We're being distracted by a small group of bandits here as we ride back toward the town to sell our loot and rest up. We have some injured people, I think. But playing this game also made me think about Stellaris and other games that would be good for making a series. I think this game would be really good for a series because it has a lot of randomness to it and uh, you know it's a sandbox so you can kind of make each game your own. There's a lot of replayability and uh, you can make each game kind of its own thing. So it lends itself to a series like Stellaris does. I tried to make a series out of this game a long time ago, but I would not suggest that you watch it because that was in the very early days of this channel, and so it's very awkward. All of those videos are very awkward. Um, they are still on my channel if you want to look at them, but uh, fair warning. 
I could try to start a series for this game now, but I think I might as well just wait for the sequel. There's another game called Crusader Kings 3 that's coming to consoles that also would be good for a series. I think Stellaris sold well enough that uh, Paradox is trying to bring some of their other titles to consoles and Crusader Kings 3 is one of them. Cities Skylines is another one and I think I think they also published uh, Empire of Sin. Empire of Sin. Uh, I intended to make a series out of Empire of Sin, but it was so buggy when I first bought it that I never tried to make a series. I think now it's been fixed, so I guess I could try it now. Civilization VI would also lend itself to making a series, but in my opinion, it's not quite as interesting to watch as some of these other games. It's a great game, Civilization VI, but I don't know how good of a series it would make. That's another game I tried to make a series out of, and then I gave up because I felt like it just wasn't interesting to watch. But maybe I'm wrong about that. Age of Wonders Planetfall is another game that could make a good series, but who are we kidding? We all know what series is coming up next. I haven't forgotten about Stellaris, and uh, I have been preparing for a new series, and uh, we will start one soon, I promise. I've just become sort of fascinated with uh, checking out how these old games run on the PS5. So uh, I keep having ideas for other games to try out. And sometimes if it's a game like this, uh, I will get engrossed in it all over again. So I'm kind of running out of things to ramble about here. So I'm just going to let the rest of this video play out. We've got a, a couple more battles with some bandits here. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video enough to... Uh, Think about uh, Mount and Blade 2 Banner Lord and maybe check out some videos on that. Check out some videos on Crusader Kings 3. I've always, uh, I'm always looking for ideas for a new series. In fact, I am actually working on something right now that's going to end up being about an 8 video series and I'm not going to upload any of them until the whole thing is done. And I've actually been working on this since uh, the PS4 Pro. So I, I think I have three videos out of the eight that were made on the PS4 Pro. And then uh, the fourth one is going to be the first one that's going to be on PS5. And then I will finish out the final four on PS5. And uh, that is all I'm going to say about that mystery series. You may hate it, you may like it, I don't know. I have fun making it, and I'll have fun looking at it later. So, hopefully you'll like it. <laughs> but if you don't, that's okay. Hopefully you can find something you like on my channel. So, I said I was going to stop rambling, and I kept rambling. So now I'm going to stop rambling, and we are going to see one more battle So I hope you've enjoyed this brief look at Mount and Blade Warband. And as always, thanks very much for watching. Today the gods will decide your fate.